All right, good morning, YouTube. In today's video, we're going to be doing a program review. So this is a program review that I was actually supposed to do quite a long time ago. So James, I am so incredibly sorry. There is no excuses. Like, you know, I do ask for your forgiveness given that I'm in school and I did kind of get a bit of a promotion at work. So been a bit, um, not overwhelmed, but just like been occupied with that for quite some time. So really do apologize for not getting this to you. Um, in a timely matter. I hope that this is still relevant to you and that this is still helpful to you. And I hope that it can be helpful to anyone else who's watching. So with this program review, let's kind of go into some of the details that he laid out for us. So he is a distance runner for some time. He discovered lifting a couple years ago and is now interested in power building. Awesome. My strength is currently not that great, which I'm trying to remedy. My main hypertrophy goal is wider shoulders. So here we have his overhead press numbers, his bench, his squat, and his deadlift. So very uh, late, as far as like strength goes, I would kind of put this like late novice, maybe, and like for some of his lifts. I mean, 315 bench is not nothing. Or 315 deadlift is not nothing for even a novice. Like novices can get to a 315 like pretty quickly, but at the same time, it's not like, there's not that many novices who just start there. At least not many who I've personally trained when I was a trainer in person. So upper one is a bench press day. Upper two is an overhead press day. So this is actually one of my favorite ways to program. One of the uh, programs or one of the videos I have coming up in the future is my favorite program. My favorite like beginner program or like my favorite basic program. And that is a bench, squat, overhead press, deadlift program. So it's kind of like a body part split except it's a movement pattern split so i really do like that the program is eight weeks long due to personal constraints on access to equipment so i'm kind of confused on this so does this mean that for eight weeks you'll be able to have access to a gym and then for another eight weeks you won't have access to a gym so i will default to sets times reps unless specified i use the same weight for back off sets that's interesting Three sets of five with a plus set means I do two sets of five and an AMRAP where I aim. Yep, that's how I write it down as well. So let's look at upper one. His upper one is a bench row superset with a low incline bench and barbell rows. So he's supersetting low incline bench with barbell rows. That's cool. So let's see. For the first four weeks, he's using a top set, whereas for the next four weeks, he's using a heavy single. So I think that there's just too much missing in between. So when it comes to heavy singles, I think heavy singles are one of those things that you can do year round and be fine with. But here's my problem. So very first problem is the fact that you're going above 90%. When you use heavy singles in your program, I almost never recommend going above 90%. Like some trainers, some coaches will even say like you want to use 90% of a training max, which is already 90% of your true max. So when it comes to doing heavy singles, I really don't recommend going above 90% for the sole reason that you're actually not building much strength. You are not like, it's not, you're not going to hit a new PR every eight weeks. You're just not going to do that. If you are a novice and especially if you're, and especially as you become more intermediate, more advanced. So I really don't recommend going above 90% this frequently if you kind of like restart this cycle every single time. You're not going to be hitting a PR like that. So if you want to keep heavy singles in the program, that's fine. Um, but I would just cap that out at 90%. Now, with the top sets, and this is kind of interesting because you're mixing, like doing a top set. And a top set is usually something close to an AMRAP, but you're doing it for the first set. And... Uh, the big issue here is that you mentioned that you use the same weight on the back offsets. Unless specified, I use the same weight on back offsets. If you were hitting a top set for 12, I kind of find it unlikely that you'll hit three sets of 10 at least easily. If, or like, let's see, like if you're hitting a true top set of 12, right? And I don't see an RPE cap here. So like, is this a top set of 12 at RPE seven at a RPE eight, or is it like your 12 rep max? And then you're going to be doing three sets of 10 right after. So let's, I'm going to give you the, you know, I'm going to assume that you're thinking about this more 
I'm trying to find a nice way to put it. I'm going to say that you're thinking about this a bit more like intelligently and you're not doing a 12 rep max and then doing three sets of 10 because that's not going to happen. If you do a 12 set max, uh, a 12 rep max, your subsequent sets are probably going to be like 10, 8, 6, something like that. Just because when you go to failure at like the with 12 reps, the likelihood that you're going to be hitting anything close to 12 rep in the subsequent sets when you're resting anywhere between one to two minutes, one to three minutes even, probably isn't going to be that high unless you're just built to have much more um, strength endurance. But generally speaking, I don't think that's what's happening here. I think it's likely that you're probably doing like a top set of 12 at an RPE 7, 8. But even then, uh, I think a distance of only two or difference of only two reps between your top set and your working sets to be a bit small and it can definitely run into problems the heavier you start to lift so two things here one i'm not the biggest fan of how like for four weeks you're just doing a top set that just you know ramps up a bit too quickly and then going above 90 percent for singles i don't think that there's any reason for any lift to go above 90 percent for your heavy singles reason being 90 percent is something that you should be able to hit no matter what no matter what, you should be able to hit 90% of your one rep max. When you hit a really big PR elsewhere in the program with a variation, with your rep work, that's when that number can change. But generally speaking, like like if you watched uh, the Berserk Method by Bald Omni-Man, he makes a great point that no one has really taught anyone how to progress with heavy singles. and that And the way that you do that is... This is something that I've done intuitively, but just never put it down into words and never really like talked about it too much until like I kind of heard it from him. Whereas just once I hit a really big PR with a different number completely. So let's say, for example, when my bench press was 245, I kept doing heavy singles with 245 until I hit 225 for like eight or 10. And then at that point, I, that's when I realized, OK, 245 is probably not my heavy single anymore. Let's find what it is. I tested it out got found a nice comfortable single um that was around 265 275 and then i just continued working from there so yeah you are it took weeks for that to happen by the way so you're not going to be progressing this quickly so um yeah low incline bench great movement and then one thing i will say is when it comes to this exercise rotation right I think that, like, I understand why you'd want to do this. So with a low incline bench, you could argue that that's going to be better for hypertrophy. It's specific enough, but let's see. What I would rather see, personally, and this is just like something that, like, this is not something that's like, you know, super scientific. It's not something that's like, um you know backed by studies or anything like that it's just something that i have personally done whenever i have something like this usually like let's say for the top sets or the single you want that to be your competition bench like that's what i would do personally and then you want all of your rep work to be a variation so that way every single week you get good enough practice you don't have to relearn the lift because basically you're going to be doing four weeks where you're not in like you're you're not doing the lift um you have so yeah there's four weeks where you're not doing the competition bench and then you have to basically go into the next four weeks not trying to get your technique back trying to get back to the groove of it this might be an issue more so for some people than others but i know for myself it actually did become an issue so that's why when it came to let's say how i would program and when I do a, like a low incline bench, I literally just put like a plate or something underneath the bench because that's how low of an incline I want. Uh, when I whenever I did do incline benching, but yeah, I would do competition bench for the top set or the single, and then I would do all my rep work with a variation. So other ways that I would kind of go about doing this is I would do a um, paused competition bench followed by close grip bench press for my working sets or a Larson press for my working press sets. So there's that barbell row for uh, four to four sets of eight to 10 reps or seal row for three sets of 12 to 15. So looking at this, so it's kind of like higher volumes for the first four weeks. And then you spike up the intensity, uh, the next couple of weeks after that. So you have a lot of good ideas. You have a lot of, um, 
like you're starting to experiment with the manipulation of volume and intensity, which is really important when it comes to long term strength and size. But at the same time, I don't think that this is necessarily the direction I would recommend. Because uh, for one, like it just seems somewhat arbitrary. It's um, it kind of feels like you've heard good ideas from different places and just decided, well, how do I put them together? And that's fine. That's how I learned. That's how we all learned. We just like heard some stuff like that and gave it a try. Sorry about that. So there's that. All right. But I don't think that this is the best idea. Anyway, moving on to the shoulder giant set, three sets of eight to 10 on the seated dumbbell overhead press. I would actually expand this out to be a bit more personally. Um, I think three sets of eight to 15 is a great way of going about this. Um, I do like that you involve or include the overhead press um, into your day. One thing that I really take away from the overhead press is that it just really, one thing I've noticed is that if ever I went into a program or made a program that was like bench specialized and I decided and I said to myself that there's just not enough recoverability for the overhead press, I have found that as a result of running that program, my shoulders felt worse. I always got some aches and pains. So I needed the overhead press to be there. Now, with that being said, that means, of course, my bench press work had less volume. It became like there was less um, volume, there was less intensity associated with it, but as was, but it was to make sure that I stayed injury free and could keep training, which is more important in my opinion. So I do like that you supersetted it with uh, bicep curls. That's one of my super favorite supersets also, like an overhead press and then bicep curls. I kind of call this like a compound isolation antagonist. This is, I, I'm gonna try to find a way to like make this <laughs> um, shorter to say, but compound isolation antagonist agonist superset so what's used in a overhead press your shoulders and triceps what is the what would be an antagonistic like superset normally you would do pull-ups what's involved with that your back and biceps but what if you just took one muscle of those so you do overhead press which is shoulders and triceps and then you superset it with like a bicep curl one it's less fatiguing overall like so you don't need to be like super well conditioned i mean like it's a super set with weights you don't need to be super well conditioned for that anyway but you like you know what i mean and then finally rear delt cable flies so uh good on that so let's talk about squat pull-up super set uh so you have high bar pause squats followed by competition squats so when it comes to this you run into the same problem here where if you're going to be using heavy singles, don't go above 90%. Like, yeah, just don't go above 90%. There's no reason to do so. Push progression with your reps. Like you're doing, am, you're doing an AMRAP here. So like, ideally you want to be doing like something here. So one thing I would actually go about doing here, like let's say with the AMRAP is let's say you do three sets of four to eight, right? Week five. Like, let's say, or yeah, week five, week one, however you want to put it, you hit three sets and you get, let's say, um, six, four, four, right? Then the next week you hit like, or six, five, four. Let's, let's, let's do that for like simplicity's sake. And this is, and this is you doing an AMRAP on each set. This is you doing an AMRAP. So you hit your one rep shy of failure each set. And on the first set, you hit six. On the next one, you hit five on the next one you hit four on the next week you hit six five five it's still progress you're still making progress and then the next week after that you actually hit uh, you make progress on the first set so now you hit seven six maybe four or five like doesn't really matter probably going to be five because like that's kind of how it plays out whenever i do something like this in my own programming and then finally week four you hit eight and then like uh maybe six and then five five like six five or five yeah so you are making progress on your amrap sets but it's not always going to be in the same place sometimes it's going to be on the last set of the day sometimes it's going to be on the first set of the day and sometimes it allows you to get further progress elsewhere the thing is like when it comes to progressive overload doing more sets more reps more weight that doesn't mean it's static across all three sets, which is why I feel like a lot of people kind of mess up. So for example, like let's say with a linear progression, where it's just a three by five, add, add five pounds every week, 
The reason why that's not going to work out well for you is because you're going to be adding five pounds to three sets and you're keeping the reps the same. Probably not going to happen, especially as you get stronger. And um, that's why I don't really recommend it. So what I would do personally is I would just add weight on the last set or something like that, or add reps on the last set or maybe the first set or something like that. Right. But anyway, when it comes to five sets of four, five sets of five, five sets of six, five sets of seven, um, here's the issue with this if you are going to be using a weight that actually like is challenging like you can't use this like either there's a couple things that's going to happen either you can't use the same weight each week um like let's say you use the same weight each week right that means for these two weeks you're basically doing nothing for these two weeks you're staying so far away from failure that you're not really doing much so let's say you're uh, like right here, five sets of seven. This is where you're one rep shy of failure. This is where you're two rep shy of failure. This is where you're three rep shy of failure. This is where you're four rep shy of failure. So in that way, yeah, maybe there's like something to that. And I'm, I'm like, there is, but I mean, why would you do it in my opinion? Like, that's kind of my thing. Um, Just because what I would rather do is like maybe here we have let's see four five this is 20 total reps so maybe here you do three sets of six right then or yeah three sets of six so three sets of six right and but then you're staying like you're keeping this pretty light and then the next week week you're going to three sets of eight then you go to four sets of six and then you go to maybe a five by five right so I kind of like this a little bit more just because you're able to kind of like here you're using the same weight um like but you're able to push it a bit more but i don't know like let me let me pause real quick let me pause real quick i get what you're trying to do you're trying to add a rep every single week the issue with that is is that you're going to get to a point where you're not going to be able to do that, especially for five sets. Whenever you do something for five sets, that means you have to pick something light enough that lets you do that. So um, for this week, you're going to have no hard sets. For this one, you might have maybe one hard set. Probably not any. This one is where you're more likely to have at least one hard set. And this one's a maybe. But then, but yeah, that's why, like, when it comes to doing something for five sets, when you do something for five sets, it's not because you're, it's because, it's because of this. You're trying to get high quality form volume. So if you see some, a program where sets are pretty high, like, clo like, like, and when I say high sets, I mean five to eight sets. It usually means that form is a variable being taken into consideration. I don't really think that there's much benefit as far as, let's say, hypertrophy or no, um, for hypertrophy let's just say hypertrophy for five sets on one exercise reason being is because when it comes to hypertrophy training proximity to failure is really important so if you are like you know sticking close to failure you won't be able to do that for five sets like the first like you can do that maybe for three or four but a fifth is kind of like asking a bit much like at that point you're the rate of diminishing returns and then like the amount of reps that you're actually going to be getting it just kind of lends itself to junk volume at that point and you're just and you would actually like just be better off recovering for next time so that's why when it comes to like just doing fives and adding um a set each time or a rep each time like you know I like doing that kind of stuff. I mean, like you see me do it right here, but I mean, I usually keep this because the sets are pretty low, but yeah, so not super sold on this progression, especially because like I said, it's a huge drop off too. Like you're just like, your like your volume just like tanks and um, it's not really steady. So you're more of a like power builder, right? So when it comes to power building, there's a couple like trade offs and caveats in contrast to powerlifting training. For one, in power building, it's more concurrent. So here, like, let's see if I can, can I draw something? Is there a tool here where I can just like draw a uh, drawing? Let's see, let's see what it'll let me do. Uh, 
so let's see this is like let's say this is your volume right you start out high and then you go low this is your intensity you start out low and then you go high this is kind of like what it is to be a um like to train like more in like terms of a power lifter because you want to get here but to do that you have to kind of start here and as that goes down this has to accommodate right so that's power lifting um but when it comes to let's say power building let's see if i can how do i erase this yeah okay there we go so when it comes to power building because there's some variables and there's like some trade-offs power building is you accepting that you don't want like you want the best of size and strength you want the best of a mix of two things. That's power building. Power building is not getting the best of like of size or strength. So uh, I know that's kind of confusing, but what I mean by is this. Like, I don't know if you, uh, you see my other videos, but if you maximize size training, you're not going to be getting the most strength. If you maximize strength training, you're not going to be getting the most amount of size because strength is kind of relative to certain movements. Anytime you're spending time doing something else, you're not doing another thing. So anytime that I'm boxing, I'm not wrestling. Anytime I'm trying to build muscle, I'm not trying to improve my bench press form. So when it comes to power building, you kind of like figure out and have to prioritize what really matters to you and then kind of go from there now when it comes to like your progression or anything like that as far as like so you know this was like how things go volume starts here and then ends here intensity starts here and then ends there when it comes to power building your volume like for the most part it's kind of like this like let me i'll make an axis but yeah so here there's that like this is just a graph right so volume very steadily increases over time where you can and then intensity just kind of stays with that <laughs> so it's not as uh, abrupt it's not as um it's not as like clear cut as let's say like something like just like this right so there's that but anyway scribbles <laughs> i have a whiteboard literally right there would have been anyway so my strength is currently not that great, but anyway, okay. So yeah, I'm just not, I'm just not a fan of like switching up the progression so much. Uh, that's, that's one. And then of course going above 90%. So overhead press follows the same exact thing as the bench. So it runs with the same issues. Wide grip Romanian deadlift at RPE seven or eight uh this is like this is where my unga bunga comes out right when it comes to certain movements i literally just i just personally think that it's better to just do as many reps as possible at a certain rpe threshold so yeah seven or eight is fine but like the reason why i say this is because you can use the same weight for quite a long amount of time. You don't, you're not forced to keep adding weight when you don't need to. But I remember there was this one uh, podcast on Elite FTS channel with Dave Tate and JM. I is either Blakely, Blakely, or Blackley, like one of those things. But Blackie, maybe. Oh man, that sounded bad. Um, <laughs> but basically, he said if you don't believe in plateaus, you don't plateau. On um, and like I'm. Probably I might be misquoting him, but I I think I remember this is what I remember hearing. I remember him saying that when it came to his accessory work, he just did three sets to failure and tried to beat that the next time, and that was it. When it comes to a lot of things, right? When it comes to like my basic programming like philosophy, on my strength work or on my main work, I like to have a little bit more structure. I like to make sure that. I hit those numbers. I like to make sure that certain parameters, certain things are being checked off every single time that I go into the gym for that working set. <coughs> when it comes to the supplementary work the, or the, and the bodybuilding work for that, it's real. That's where like the more like, uh, go do as many reps as you can safely stop the set when you're about to, um, ruin your form and add weight when possible. That's it trying to have a super structured way of progressing on the other movements 
I found doesn't really work all that well because sometimes you won't really know just how your strength and your performance on the first movement of the day might impact the subsequent sets, but you can always put in place certain things like an AMRAP at a certain RPE to kind of auto-regulate that for you so that way you're always making progress where it matters but you're also able to put progression somewhere else without having it be too structured too rigid too planned out and not be able to you know progress so there's that i like that your workouts are you know fairly short but you know they hit they have big hitters as far as exercise selection so the exercise selection is good just wanted to let you know that z press into competition overhead press but like i said same issue weighted pull-ups um so is that let's see uh so I, I i can see that these are a lot of ideas that i've you know um talked about on the channel uh as far as like let's say this I, i'm not saying i invented it i'm just saying that i i remember i know i referenced it a lot on the channel and i don't know i don't know if you got it from me even but yeah i like this so exercise selection is good there's nothing really wrong with your exercise selection uh 45 incline bench press i would kind of go a bit higher rep here um Part of that is because, I mean, it's pretty high volume for the most part on each day. But usually what I like to do is, let's say on one day, it's kind of like more intensity focused. So lower rep ranges, like 4 to 8, 6 to 10. And then the other day, a bit more like 8 to 12, 10 to 15. That's just me. Uh, deadlift, rear delt superset. So I like that you adjusted this. Like, good kudos, good, kudos to you for that. Like, you're not using the same exact... Um, top sets on the deadlift as you would the other exercises but i'm still not really sold on it in particular um i like that you adjusted the volume for it uh, but as i said it kind of just runs into the same issue where the volume progression just is not um what i would kind of recommend especially because the reason why i don't like programs like this right the reason why my programs tend to be something more like here's a starting point and here are mechanisms that you use to auto regulate your training. That's that's really how I program, because when it comes to these things. I have found that if a week doesn't go right, if a part of your program doesn't go right, if a one exercise doesn't progress in the way that you think it should, if your not hitting your numbers in a specific kind of way that you're liable to just kind of like throw the whole thing out. I'm not saying that's a problem with you, but I'm just saying that tends to be what problem I see with a lot of programs where it's just like, uh, I'm stuck on week six of this program. I'm stuck on week five of this eight week program. I'm stuck on, you know, like I prefer to have a starting point, have a baseline rules of auto regulation and progression. And then you go from there. And that's me Saturday, gentle cycle ride for 30 minutes awesome phenomenal is this a bad program no it's actually not too bad the issue with it is just the progression the exercise selection the exercise order things like that it's actually all pretty good the main thing is just the 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 progression it's too quick eight weeks is not a long enough time to really solidify anything meaningful for size and strength in my opinion um, unless you're a complete novice. So this is a bit on the, like, it's one of the reasons why I don't like programs was like eight week program, 12 week program. No, like your program should be, it should be stable enough that you can run it for maybe a year before you change it out of not necessity, but just because you want something fresh. Um, like I feel like if you program correctly, that is going to be the only reason you'll be changing your program rather than um, because your other program stopped working. I, uh, that's that's a very oversimplified and underbaked idea, but it's something that I kind of want to like leave you off with. So that's it for this video. Thank you so much for your patience. Pace, pace, patience, patience, patience. So yeah, sorry that it took so long, but all I would say is consider lengthening out lengthening this out like like a good program will take at a minimum a minimum 12 weeks that's three months three months that is the minimum the minimum like eight weeks for a full program that's a bit short in my opinion um 
the only, like the, the only exceptions I can think of is where like you run like through multiple cycles but this I don't really think it's like that because just at how high you reach and how quickly you get there like it's four weeks where you're like in, from the six to 12 rep range and then you all the, and then you go all the way down to singles there's not really something in between and you can pad this out with a transition block or something of that nature where you have three to five or um something like that you know and that even that can be enough to change things up a good amount here i like my question is this what weight are you starting at what's your plan uh, like like i know you're adding a weight each week but what what weight are you starting at um because like i said if you're starting at a really light weight you're not gonna have a good workout with that weight until around here um so at that point it's just like what's this you know um and then let's say you're starting out with a weight where it's a bit too heavy and then like it's like where you're actually hitting like that one to three reps away from failure each week that weight will change every single week and maybe that's a bit better but i just wanted to know like what's going on there uh same thing with everything else like is this a top top set at a rpe cap or is this a 12 rep max and you do three sets of 10 right after because those are really different as well so maybe i misread your program but these are things that you want to keep in mind if you are making your own program and everything like that i do like that as push pull like you know you have a push then a pull um and then you kind of go into like the big basic hitters so shoulders biceps triceps good good upper body day here we have your lower body day so you squat you do some uh you do some back exercises then you do romanian deadlifts and your abs perfect like there's nothing really too big about that like eventually you'll need more isolations eventually but for the most part this is fine the exercise selection is good just work on that progression and let me know what happens that's it for today's video thank you so much for watching my name is cross the king i'll see you in the next one peace